والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله ومن ولا وبعد This evening باذن الله تعالى uh, this is our 36 6th session and final session from at-tawdih wal bayan li shajarat al-iman the clarification and elucidation of the tree of faith by al-imam Abdul Rahman ibn Nasr al-Sa'di Rahimahullah uh, What remains of the book which I think we all know is the concluding statements of the author May Allah have mercy upon him and rather than to rush through them last week I thought it was better that we have a little bit of patience and take this opportunity this week to attach to his concluding statements a summary a brief summary outline of some of the important matters that we discuss during these past nine months. So tonight, after we go through the questions from last week, I'm going to start with um, the outline or summary of yani, the important points that are possible to summarize in just a few minutes, uh, and then the concluding remark, remarks of the author. So let's first look at the question and study guide from last week, number 35. Uh, the first question being complete the hadith, the meaning of which is the example of al mu'min, the believer, who recites the Quran is like a citron, which the rest of the hadith. Now. <laughs> نعم نعم يعني مثل المؤمن الذي يقرأ القرآن كمثل الأترجة تعمها طيب وريحها طيب. Uh, so يعني that's the first part of the hadith, the example or the likeness of the believer who reads the Quran, who recites the Quran is like the example of the citron. Its taste is يعني what طيب. This tastes good, and its reh, its scent, its fragrance is also good. And it's sweet tasting and sweet smelling. And the second part that the author mentioned from this hadith, وَالَّذِي لَا يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ كَمَثِلِ التَّمْرَةِ يعني in the likeness of the one who, believer, who doesn't recite the Qur'an is the example of the date. تَعْمُهَا طَيِّبْ وَلَا ريح لها. يعني its taste is sweet, good, fine, but it doesn't have any scent, any fragrance. Um, the second question is related to the hadith. Which of the two types of believers mentioned in this hadith or this part of the hadith is superior and why? Which of the two types of believers mentioned in this hadith is superior and why? Now, Fadl. Now, the believer who recites the Quran, who learns the sciences of the deen, is better than the one who doesn't have this knowledge, and that's because he not only benefits himself. But his benefit extends to others. And as the author said, Yani Mubarakun Aina Makana. Yani is blessed wherever he may be, meaning that good al khair comes to the people wherever they meet him, wherever he is, when people come in contact with him, he benefits them. Now, the third question complete the hadith Al Mu'min al Qawi Khairun. Yani the believer, the strong believer is better. Rest of the hadith. نعم فضل المؤمن قوي خير خير وأحب 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 إلا الله من من المؤمن مؤمن مؤمن ضعيف في كل خير وفي كل خير نعم زاك الله خير يعني المؤمن القوي the strong believer 
is khayrun wa habbu ilallah, is better and more beloved to Allah min al mu'min al-da'if than the weak believer. But in each of them, there is khayr, because each of them has the quality of iman, the source of all good. The fourth question discussed the intended meaning of the description of al mu'min the believer, as being strong or weak. What is intended by al mu'min al-qawi or al mu'min al-da'if? Strong in what? Weak in what? Naam. Naam, Yeah, the strong believer being the one whose strength is in diligence upon striving. Strength and diligence in striving, okay. To benefit himself uh, and the actions of the weak is not being diligent, striving, and staying away from the harmful things, and disobedience, or falling short in action. Okay, so, I mean, the difference between them is that one is diligent and doing good and doing good deeds, obedience to Allah, and the other one is weak in that. Specifically, I mean, there are a number of areas that could be outlined. The author mentions three things in particular. He said that al-mu'min al-qawi, he is qawi, yani what is intended here by qawi, and this is yani part of it. Other scholars have explained more detail than that. But he said, what is intended by qawi, meaning qawi fi amalihi. Naam, uh, Abdul Wali? Yeah, strength and action. In his actions? His faith. His faith. And he brings benefit to others. And in the benefit of others. Yani qawi fi amalihi, yani his deeds and his worship. He's strong in that. As opposed to the weak believer who, yani doesn't do as much worship or doesn't, yani do it as well. وَفِي قُوَّةِ إِمَانِهِ The strength of his iman. Yani he's strong in yani the level of yani strength of his iman. وَفِي نَفْعِهِ لِغَيْرِهِ And also in his benefiting others. He's strong in that. Yani in benefiting others. Where's the weak believer? And yani he's weak in these things. Weak in his iman. Weak in his a'mal, his ibadat. And weak in his efforts to benefit others. And, and, and it could be in other areas as well, as some of the scholars have explained. Question number five, complete the hadith, al-mu'min, the believer who mixes with the people and bears patiently their harms. And al-mu'min, al-ladhi yukhalit al-nas wa yasbir ala adahum khayrun. Yani, the one who, the believer who mixes with the people and bears patiently the harm that comes from them to him, yani he is better than the one who doesn't mix with the people and doesn't bear patiently their harm. So here, yani, the Prophet ﷺ is distinguishing between the believers. Some of them actually are hesitant or afraid yani, to mix with the people, to enjoin the good and forbid the wrong and advise the people and teach the people and call them to Allah. And others go and mix with the people, even though mixing with the people, calling them to Allah, enjoining the good and forbidding the wrong may bring harm to them from the people. They bear patiently for the sake of yani, this work of going to the people and trying to rectify and reform the society and the people around them. So the Prophet ﷺ said, this believer who mixes with the people and bears patiently the harms that may come from that is better than the one who doesn't do it. Better. But it doesn't mean the one who doesn't do it, there's no khair, right? Because still there's iman. So question number six, what does the author say is the mafhum? What is understood? from all of these ahadith, in terms of having or not having iman. And the author made a statement concerning what is understood from these three hadith. And what is the general understanding that comes from them? Now, What is understood is that the one who is devoid of iman is mm. no good. The one that is devoid of iman. Yani faqid al-iman la khayra fihi. There is no good in the one who doesn't have iman at all. Because... Yani the source of good is Iman. Without Iman, there is no good. And as the author explained, because even the person yani, who doesn't have Iman, even if they do some good things, yani, in comparison to the evil that came from them, yani, the good that they did will be neutralized. And what will remain is only the abundance of evil. And therefore, yani, there is no good at all. Uh, the last question is mentioned some of the 18 thamarat fruits and fawaid benefits of iman listed by the author. We're going to skip this answer tonight because we're going to cover that in our summary tonight, inshallah. So any, that answer will come during the process of summarizing. Um, and let me also mention that this question I said, guy, for, for this lecture tonight, when, next week, inshallah, we're not going to be going over this. So the answers, inshallah, will kind of like try to highlight them as we're going through the summary. Okay, the mention of the 
uh, the Arabic or English title of the book and the author's name, um, as well as the mention the source of the title or subject matter of this book. Where did it come from, the, the subject of this book or the title? Three of the, mention the three fusul or chapters which this book is divided into, three chapters, right? And mention at least one of the definitions of Iman that was offered by the author. And he mentioned several definitions. And then uh, the last two questions is summar summarize some of the 11 matters or 12, any of the count might be a little bit different, from which Iman is derived. The things that he mentioned from which Iman is derived or by which it is increased and strengthened. We're going to cover that. We're going to summarize those points and also summarize some of the 18 thamarat or 17 or 19 and fawaid of Iman mentioned in this book and we're going to also summarize them. So those, the, question, the answers to those questions, inshallah, we're going to look at as we go through this summary and then as we approach yani, the final remarks of the author, rahimahullah. So um, <coughs> I'm going to read <laughs> directly from the book for most of the session tonight, um, trying to summarize some of the points that I felt. And there's so much benefit, so, and it's such an abundance of benefits that the author has mentioned in this book is kind of difficult. But and after I kept going through it over and over and over again, I decided that I'll just read a little bit of what he wrote. Yani, well, from the points where he begins, I'll just read a little bit of it, and, and, he, uh, and then and he just quickly go through the things from which Iman is derived, which is the core of the book, and the benefits of Iman, the fruits of Iman. And this is really the core of the book. What is Iman? What is it derived from? How is it strengthened? How is it increased? And what are its fruits? That's the core of the book. So inshallah, we're going to try to Look at a little bit of that in the time that we have in front of us. May Allah help us, yani make it easy for us to uh, select some of, the, some of what he said that is, will be of benefit as a reminder to every one of us. Inshallah. The author begins in his introduction to the book yani by, with the words, Alhamdulillah, gharasa shajarat al-iman fi kulub ibadihi al wa saqaha wa ghadaha bil ulum al wal ma'arif al-sadiqa wal lahaji bi dhikrihi to the end of what he said about the tree of faith. Yani that praise be to Allah, the one who has planted this tree of Iman in the hearts of his chosen worshippers. And he has watered it and he has nourished it with beneficial knowledge and truthful knowledge and with constant, yani the believer being constantly engaged in the mention of Allah day and night. And he has also made for this tree fruits and blessings that come forth all the time uh, and then he, and he went on to say, yani, Shadu an la ilaha illallah wa Shadu Muhammad Rasulullah in detail. Uh, and then he talks about yani, this book, what is it composed of? And so, briefly what he says, yani, that this book is composed of Mabahith al-Iman. I think this is critical. That what is the real core of this book? Yani, issues, researches, yani, discussions related to Iman. Alati hiya hammu. مَبَاحِثْ الدِّينِ وَعَظَمْ أُصُولَ الْحَقُّ الْيَقِينِ Yani these uh, discussions or researches related to Iman, they are the most important matters of the deen. And they are the greatest of the fundamentals of truth and the greatest of the fundamentals of al-yaqeen. And these researches, these discussions, he said, are, will be derived from the Book of Allah and from the Sunnah of his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he discussed how the Sunnah yani, he agrees with the Qur'an and it explains the Qur'an and expresses the Qur'an yani, that which is mujmal in it and that which is mutlaq in it any of the details and full explanations and clarifications of what came in the Qur'an he described the Sunnah like that and then he said we will begin first with tafsirihi yani, with the explanation of what is Iman Muthanniyan bi dhikri usulihi wa muqawwimatihi. And then, secondly, the mention of the fundamentals, the foundations, and those things which strengthen iman. Wa min ayyi shayin yustamad. And from what iman is derived? What is it derived from? That's the second point. He said, Muthalithan bi fawadihi wa thamaratihi wa ma yatba'u hadhi usul. And thirdly, we're going to mention the benefits and the fruits of iman. And yani, what comes forth from that? Yani, what it produces, what it brings about. Uh, so these are the three sections of, of this book. Yani, the definition of iman, explanation of what is iman with its proofs and evidences from the Quran and from the Sunnah. Secondly, what are the things that strengthen and increase iman? What iman is derived from? 
And thirdly, what are the fruits and benefits of Iman uh, and what comes forth from them? Uh, after that, the author mentions in his introduction the ayah from the Quran, which is the basis of this book. It's the source of the subject matter of this book and the source of the title is from this ayah in the Quran in Surah Ibrahim, uh, 14th Surah, 34th and 30, uh, 24th and 25th ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَةً كَشَجْرَةٍ طَيِّبَةً يعني, did you not look, did you not see, did you not consider how Allah has made the example, He has made this example, مَثَلًا كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَةً The example of a good word, كَشَجْرَةٍ طَيِّبَةً Like a good tree. And this is the basis of the title of this book and the source, yani the material, the subject matter of this book is based upon this ayah in Surah Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this tree as أَصْلُهَا ثَابِتٌ وَفَرُعَا فِي السَّمَاءِ And its foundation, its roots, is firmly established in the earth. شَجْرَةَ iman, يعني firmly established in the hearts of the believers. وَفَرُعَا فِي السَّمَاءِ And its branches are high in the sky. تُؤْتِ أُكُلَهَا كُلَّ هِينٍ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهَا And it, give, it brings forth its fruits at every time. يعني constantly, continuously, ongoing, unceasingly, by the permission of its Rabb. And then, يعني, he closes this ayah by saying that Allah makes examples for the people that perhaps they may reflect, they may yani, take heed, that they may yani, look at this example and benefit from it as a, as a means of guidance. Uh, then he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, has made the example of the word of Iman, Kalimat al-Iman, uh, which is the best of all speech, like a tree, which is the best of all trees. And from the hadith we know, the sunnah, that the tree that is represented here is the Date palm tree, Naam. He said, this tree, the best of all trees, is described with praiseworthy characteristics. Usuluha thabitun mustaqirra. Mustaqirra. Yani its fundamentals, its foundations, its roots are firmly established. Nama'uha mustamir. And its growth is also continuous, ongoing. Wa thamaratuha la tazaa kullu waqtin kullu wa kullu heenan. تُغِلُّ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا وَعَلَىٰ غَيْرِهِمْ الْمَنَافِعْ الْمُتَنَوِّعَ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ النَّافِعَ And that its fruits at all times are continuing to bring forth any benefit to the people of Iman and to other than them, all types of benefits and all types of beneficial fruits. Here I want to like pause on this uh, last statement that he makes in the introduction, very, very important. Yani, I used to read it almost every week to remind myself of what he said here and how important this is. وَهَذِهِ الشَّجْرَةِ مُتَفَاوِتَةٌ فِي كُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ تَفَاوِتًا عَظِيمًا That this tree, it varies. Yani, it's different. It differs yani, from one, from the heart of one believer to another. A great difference. They are, they are not equal. بِحَسَبِ تَفَاوِتْ هَذِهِ الْأَوْصَافِ التي وصفها الله بها يعني that the difference the, the difference between this tree and the heart of one believer and another is in is يعني in accordance with the difference of the characteristics that Allah has described this tree with in, from one person to another يعني to whatever extent a person has, character, has become characterized with these descriptions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this tree with the more they are described with these descriptions, the greater yani, will be the tree of faith, yani, its presence in the heart of that believer. Yani, the difference between the tree and the heart, yani, the kalimat iman in the heart of one believer and another, is in accordance with the extent to which they take on these characteristics, characteristics of iman. Uh, the knowledge of iman, the actions of iman, the character and morals of iman. To whatever extent a person takes these on, yani, the, a great extent they will be described with this yani, a tree of Iman, Kalimat al Iman. Then he says, فَعَلَى الْعَبْدِ الْمُوَفَّقْ أَنْ يَسْعَى لِمَعْرِفَتِهَا وَمَعْرِفَةِ أَوْصَافِهَا وَأَسْبَابِهَا وَأُصُولِهَا وَفُرُوعِهَا So it is incumbent upon the believer to whom Allah has given success. It is incumbent upon the believer to whom Allah has given success that they strive to know this tree, and it's to know the tree, to know about it, and to know its characteristics, 
and the causes of its growth and development and strengthening, and its fundamentals and its branches, it's incumbent upon the believer that Allah has given success to strive to know about this tree. وَيَجْتَهِدْ فِي تَحَقُّقْ بِهَا عِلْمًا وَعَمَلًا And make every effort to realize, to actualize this tree in terms of knowledge and action. Knowing, having the knowledge about this tree and acting upon that knowledge. فَإِنَّ نَصِيبَهُ مِنَ الْخَيْرُ وَالْفَلَاهِ وَالسَّعَادَةَ الْعَاجِلَ وَالْآجِلَ بِحَسَبِ نَصِيبِهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الشَّجْرَةِ so, because the reason for this, why is it so important to know this tree and to know its descriptions and its causes and its fundamentals and its branches and to strive to realize it, you need to have its knowledge and, it, and to act upon it, it is because a person's portion of khair and success and happiness now and later in this world and the next, it is dependent upon yani, the portion that they have of this tree. The greater portion a person has of this tree, the greater will be their portion of al-khayr and falah and sa'ada in this world and in the next. So I think he closes the introduction with this and I think that this is a critical matter that we go back and read this book yani, again and again and again and try to yani, um, become more acquainted with this tree and its characteristics, its fundamentals and its branches, its causes, what are the causes of its increase and strengthening uh, and also to know its fruits and benefits so that will be an inspiration for us to try to actualize and to realize the tree of faith in ourselves. Uh, after this, the first chapter, Al-Fasl Al-Awwal, the first section of the book, the author entitles, Fi Had Al-Iman Wa Tafsiri, yani the definition of Iman and its explanation. Uh, and from what he said here, and I'm going to try to skip right down to the definitions, after he talks about the importance of knowing something, knowing, Yani the definition, knowing it's the boundaries of a thing, understanding it well and knowing its opposite. He says, as far as the definition of Iman and its explanation, number one. And these are not numbered, but and these are the ways he has explained it. The various ways he has explained it. The first way explanation he gave is that Iman is at tasdiq al-jazm. Wal-i'tiraf al-tam. Bi jami'i ma amar Allahu wa rasuluhu bil imani bihi. وَالْإِنْقِيَادُ ظَاهِرٌ وَبَاطِنًا Few words that cover what is Iman in full, if we really think about it. And alhamdulillah, we have been studying this and yani looking at the different aspects and evidences and proofs concerning it. He said, Iman is tasdeek al-jazm. Yani absolute, yani uh, affirmation, certain, yani affirmation, unquestionable affirmation. وَالْإِعْتِرَافَ tam and complete and perfect acknowledgement of everything that Allah and His Messenger have, have ordered us to have Iman in. Yani to have a tasdiq, attestation, to confirm the truthfulness with certainty, without any doubt, and to acknowledge, with complete acknowledgement, everything that Allah and His Messenger has ordered us to have Iman in. And then He said, وَالْإِنْقِيَادْ ظَاهِرٌ وَبَاطِنًا And then to comply, to comply with that, to comply with what it requires, yani, um, outwardly and inwardly. Outwardly and inwardly. And perhaps yani, the order of these words, al inqiyad ظَاهِرٌ وَبَاطِنًا is also yani, a point to consider. That he said compliance yani, is outwardly and <laughs> inwardly. Not just outwardly, but inwardly. It has to be in the heart. Compliance in the heart. Then he says in explanation, as a second explanation of it, he says, Therefore, based on this definition, فَهُوَ التَّصْدِيقَ الْقَلْبَ وَإِتِقَادُهُ الْمُتَّضَمِّنُ لِعَمَالَ الْكُلُوبَ وَعَمَالَ الْبَدَنِ وَذَلِكَ شَامِلٌ لِلْقِيَامِ بِالدِّينِ كُلِّهِ So, therefore, if Iman is this, this يعني, affirmation, attestation with certainty and acknowledgement, complete acknowledgement of everything that Allah has mentioned ordered us to believe in, and then to comply with it inwardly and outwardly, he said, therefore, then Iman is تَصْدِيقَ الْقَلْبَ وَإِتِقَادُهُ it is the affirmation of the heart and the conviction that's in the heart. Yani it's the affirmation and conviction that's in the heart. Al-mutadhamminu, which entails, which also includes within it, that which is in the heart, includes within it, yani the requirement of what? Amal al kulub wa amal al badin The actions of the heart as well as the actions of the body. And he said this is inclusive of the fulfillment of all of the requirements of the deen. يعني للشامل للقيام بالدين كله. So again, يعني what he is presenting here 
in this second aspect of the definition of Iman, that it's i'tiqad and tasdeeq in the heart, and it's also actions of the heart and the limbs, inwardly and outwardly. It's not just conviction, but it also requires action. And then finally he says, وَلِهَذَا كَانَ الْأَئِمَّةِ وَالسَّلَفِ يَقُولُونَ And for this reason, based on what he has mentioned here, he said for this reason, the imams of the people of Sunnah and the Salaf, the early generation of the Muslims, they used to say, a third definition of iman, al-iman qawlu al-qalb wal-lisan, wa'amalu al-qalb wal-lisan wal-jawari. That iman is speech of the heart and the tongue. And it is actions of the heart and the tongue and the limbs. So it's speech and it's action. Speech of not only the tongue, but speech of the heart and actions, not only of the limbs, but actions of the heart and the tongue and the limbs of the body. And then finally he said, وَهُوَ قَوْلٌ وَعَمَلٌ وَعَتِقَادٌ يعني that iman is speech and action and conviction. يَزِيدُ بِالطَّاعَةِ وَيَنْقُصُ بِالْمَعَسِيَةِ Yet it increases with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it decreases with disobedience. And here this is an extra point that he mentions in this definition that not only is Iman speech and action, but it also increases. Iman increases and it decreases. It increases by obedience to Allah and it decreases by disobedience to Allah. And when we covered this point, we went into a little bit more detail, especially with Shaykh al-Islam al-Taymiyyah mentions Hamawiyah and how Shaykh al-Uthaymin, in his summary of Hamawiyah, how he explained it, you know, that there are different aspects of the increase and decrease of Iman, but most of the scholars said it increased with obedience to Allah, and it decreases with disobedience to Allah. And finally he said, يعني, فهوة, Therefore, هُوَ شَامِلُ أَقَائِدِ هُوَ يَشْمَلُ أَقَائِدِ الْإِمَانِ وَأَخْلَاقَهُ وَعَمَالَهُ Therefore, Iman is inclusive of أَقَائِدِ الْإِمَانِ The convictions of Iman, the, what is required a person to believe in, the convictions of Iman, the tenets of Iman, as well as the akhlaq of iman, the character, morals, and manners, as well as the amal, yani the deeds, the acts of worship that a person does. All of this is part of iman. It's not just conviction, it's not just actions, yani it's not just worship, but also requires yani that we yani live in accordance with the akhlaq of iman. There's also akhlaq, it's not just ibadat, but there's also character, there's manners and morals that are required by any yani, that Allah requires for the believer to observe. Uh, after mentioning a lot of evidences from the Quran and from the Sunnah, the author spends a lot of time with proving beyond any doubt that this is a correct definition of Iman, that it is yani, not only conviction, but it's also speech and it's also actions, it's inward actions and outward actions. He went on to make a special subdivision from this definition of Iman, which yani, uh, I'll just allude to, where he says that if it became clear from the book and from the sunnah, from all the evidences that he mentioned here, uh, the meaning of iman, if it became clear, that it is ismun jamiun li shira'il al-islam wa usul al-iman wa haqaq al-ihsan wa tawabiyo dhalika min umur al-deen bal huwa ism li al-deen kullihi ulima annahu yazidu wa yanqus wa yaqwa wa yadhuf. Yani if it became clear from the evidences, the meaning of iman became clear from the evidences of the book and the sunnah, and that Iman is a noun, is an, an expression that includes, that includes within it all of the legislations of Islam and the fundamentals of Iman and the realities of Ihsan. And these are the aspects of, of the deen, right? Islam and Iman and Ihsan. If it became clear that Iman includes all of this and whatever follows that from the matters of deen, then we should know then that Iman is a word that represents the whole of the deen and therefore yani we should also know that it increases and it decreases and it's strengthened and it's weakened yani by a person acting upon the various aspects of the deen whether it is related to matters of aqidah or matters of akhlaq or matters of ibadah or adab whatever it is every aspect of the deen is either a cause Yani of a person's increase of the iman and strengthen it if they act in upon those things or the opposite. So he mentioned some evidences, some ayahs from the Quran and some hadith. And then after that he goes to the second section. First section meaning what? The definition of iman. The second section. Oh, okay. I'm looking at this watch wrong. 
It's telling you how much time is remaining. I'm thinking that's the how much time we already elapsed. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Al Fasl Al Thani. Yani the second uh, chapter or section of this book, he says, "Fi dhikri al umur alati yustamadu minha al iman." Yani the mention of those things from which iman is derived. Yani how do you achieve iman? And he goes on to say in this chapter, we'll see that he also mentions here not only the things from which iman is derived, but the things through which iman is strengthened and through which iman is increased, and the opposite as well. Yani mainly is concentrating on what here? Yani what are the essential elements of iman? What are the things that establish iman, that strengthen iman, that increase iman? He says that this chapter is a tremendously beneficial chapter and of great need, rather of a necessity that a person knows it and gives care and gives care to it. Ma'rifatan wa tisafan. Yani not only knowing it but being characterized by it. Yani by the knowledge that is contained in this section. Dealing with yani the matters from which Iman is derived. And that is because Iman huwa kamal al abd wa bihi taratafi'u darajatuhu fi dunya wal akhirah. Because the perfection of any human being is through Iman. And a person will be raised in this world, degrees, ranks in this world, in the next life, based on Iman. Wa huwa as sabab wa tariq li kulli khayrin ajilin wa ajil. And it is also the cause or the means and the way for every good now and later in this world and the next. And Iman will not be achieved. And Iman will not be strengthened. It will not be completed and perfected. إِلَّا بِمَعْرِفَةِ مَا مِنْهُ يُسْتَمَدْ Except that a person knows from what it is derived. What are its sources? What are its causes? And what are the roads or ways to Iman? And then he mentions yani, these things from which Iman is derived generally and then specifically. Generally, it's important that he mentions here yani, that in the general sense, Iman is derived from التدبر لآيات الله المتلوة من الكتاب والسنة يعني that Iman is derived from reflection, contemplation over the ayat of Allah which are recited in the book and in the sunnah وتأمل لآياته القونية على اختلاف أنواعها and also reflecting and contemplation over what the ayat in the creation, the universal signs in Allah's creation of all different types. And then he says, and this is the general, and this is in general, the sources of Iman and the things that strengthen Iman, he said, reflecting on the ayat in the book and the sunnah, and reflecting on the ayat in the creation, and he said, وَالْحِرْسْ عَلَى مَعْرِفَةِ الْحَقِّ الَّذِي خُلِقَ لَهُ الْعَبْ And being diligent and yani, eager to know the truth for which the human being has been created. And that a person has to be diligent in this matter. Don't take it lightly. To know the truth for which we have been created. The purpose of our creation. وَالْعَمَلْ بِالْحَقِّ And then to act upon it. And then he says, وَجِمِيعَ الْأَسْبَابِ مَرْجِعُهَا إِلَى هَذَا الْعَصْلَ الْعَظِيمِ And everything goes back to all the causes of Iman. Strengthening Iman. Yani increasing Iman. All of it goes back to what? هَذَا الْعَصْلَ الْعَظِيمِ يعني مَعْرِفَةِ الْحَقِّ وَالْعَمَلْ بِهِ Everything goes back to what? Knowing the truth and acting upon it. Knowing the truth and acting upon it. And then he mentions, um, I don't know, 17 or 18 affairs, which are, yani, which he mentions as the tafsil, the detail concerning the things which strengthen iman. And he said there are many, and he said minha, meaning what? From them. Yani, there are many, and he's going to mention some of them. So he mentions here the first one, which he says is the greatest of them is ma'rifat asma'ila al-husna al-waridah fi al-kitab wa sunnah wa al-hirs ala fahm ma'aniha wa ta'abbud lillahi fiha and this is a lot the greatest of them is knowing the names of the beautiful names of Allah which have come to us in the book and the sunnah this is a study a lifetime study knowing the beautiful names of Allah that came in the book and the sunnah والحرص على فهم معانيها and being diligent and eager and making an effort what to understand the meanings of those names to know their meanings and then to worship Allah by them this is the first and then he mentions some evidences concerning that and the second one he says and also from amongst those things which are sources of iman and strengthening iman and increasing iman is تدبر القرآن على وجه الأموم يعني contemplating the Quran in a general sense. And he mentions further on in a more specific sense, looking at yani, 
the meticulousness of the Qur'an, the accuracy, the truthfulness, and how there's no discrepancies in it, and so on. Yani reflecting over, reflecting upon the Qur'an. That's the second thing. That means then that it is incumbent upon a believer who wants to strengthen Iman, and increase the Iman, and to protect the Iman, and to nourish the Iman, that a person has to, and he give himself to the Qur'an. And if the Qur'an is not something that's read in Ramadan, we have to strive against our nafs if it resists reading the Qur'an every single day, reflecting on the Qur'an every single day. It's not enough just to be reading it, but rather we have to stop and ponder and contemplate and reflect on the meanings of the Qur'an and try to understand the Qur'an so that it can benefit us, so that it can cre- increase our iman and strengthen us and, and he bring us closer to Allah. The third thing he said, from the things that strengthen Iman, مَعْرِفَةِ الْأَحَدِيثِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَمَا تَدْعُوا إِلَيْهِ مِنْ عُلُومَ الْإِمَانِ وَعَمَالِهِ And the third thing he said is knowing the ahadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and that which it calls to, يعني which the hadith of the Prophet called to of knowledge of Iman and the actions of Iman. And he's studying the ahadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so that one comes to know, يعني get information, knowledge of Iman, and the actions of Iman that are contained in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number four, he says, Min turuk mujibat al-Iman wa asbabihi. Yani from the ways that necessitate, that necessarily bring about Iman, and the causes of Iman is ma'rifati, ma'rifatu an nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa ma'rifatu ma hu alayhi min al-akhlaq al-aliya wa al-usaf al-kamila. Yani from the things that necessitate Iman, and, uh, and the causes or means to achieving Iman is knowing the Prophet ﷺ himself, knowing him. And in the previous point, he said what? Knowing the hadith of the Prophet. Here he said, knowing the Prophet ﷺ and knowing yani, the lofty character and the perfect descriptions that, yani, he is, that, he was, that he is described with. And he knowing about the character of the Prophet ﷺ and the way that he has been described in terms of his qualities and characteristics. The fifth thing he said from the causes of Iman and the things that call to Iman, and yani that invite a person to Iman. He said, التفكر في القوم في خلق السماوات والأرض وما فيهن من المخلوقات المتنوعة. يعني that from the things that strengthen Iman is reflection upon the creation, the creation of the heavens and the earth, and all of the various different types of creation, yani creatures, that are in this creation, reflecting upon what Allah has created, the various types of creations. And he didn't number, yani this particular um, copy of the book doesn't number the next point, but it comes under number five, and that is, التفكر في كثرة النعم الله وآلائه العام والخاصة. Yani that also reflecting upon the many bounties and blessings of Allah, which are general for everything in the creation, and which are specific to any individual. Reflecting on the bounties and blessings of Allah, that no, nothing in the creation is free from enjoying and benefiting those blessings, even for the blinking of an eye. He said this also calls to Iman. Yani reflecting on the bounties and blessings of Allah in the creation, that are general for everyone. Yani the air that we breathe, yani the rain that comes out, everybody benefits from these things. And then there are specific special blessings that individuals are receiving. And if that somebody has sight and somebody has hearing and another person doesn't. Somebody has wealth, somebody has health and another person doesn't. Reflecting on the bounties of Allah that he has given to the creation in general and that he has given to each one of us. This is also a means of strengthening and increasing Iman. Number six he says, from the things that call to Iman is al ikthar min dhikrillahi kulla waqtin wa min dua alladhi huwa mukhal ibadah. Also, and increasing the remembrance of Allah all the time. And also engaging in dua, which is the core or essence, the heart of worship. Yani and dhikr, increasing in dhikr and increasing in dua. Number seven, he said, Ma'arifatul Mahasin al Deen. And from the things that yani, achieve, that bring about Iman, is knowing the beautiful aspects of the Deen of Islam. It's belief system, it's character and manners and morals, and as well, Yani, the actions that Islam yani, represents. Knowing the beauty of Islam. Knowing the beauty of Islam. Number eight, he says, from the, from the greatest of things that strengthen Iman, 
he said al ijtihad fi tahaqqiq fi maqam al ihsan fi ibadat Allah wal ihsan ila khalqihi and from the greatest things that strengthen a man is that a person strives ijtihad they make effort to realize to actualize the station of al ihsan and he worshiping Allah as though you see him and if and even though you don't see him know that knowing that he sees you and to the and all of what is entailed in that meaning and he's striving making an effort a conscious effort to achieve the station of ihsan and it's not just a theoretical concept and if there's such a thing as ihsan but rather the believer should be making an effort every day all the time day and night to achieve the station of ihsan and that doesn't just come yani because you desire it. rather a person has to work for such a thing this is a source of increase in iman that is that a person strives to achieve ihsan in their worship of Allah as well as in their dealings with the people being kind and good to the people number 9 he said and from the, from the things that strengthen and increase iman he mentions the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qad aflaha al-mu'minun to the end of where he says ulaika humul warithun yani surah al-mu'minun the first to the tenth ayat, which bring various descriptions of the believers. From amongst them is the presence of heart and mind when a person is praying. Another of them is a zakat, turning away from yani false and yani vain speech and actions, uh, protecting a pr- protecting oneself from evil yani sinful behavior, especially yani fornication and adultery. That a person guard the trust. Yani when they are entrusted with something and the contracts that they keep the contracts and agreements that they make and finally he said to guard and protect and preserve the salawat yani the all of the obligations of the prayer the times of the prayer and whatever is required of it internally and externally this all came under point number 9 that is qad aflaha al-mu'minun these are from the things in this particular these ayats of the first beginning of surah al-mu'minun which are from those things which strengthen and increase iman. Number 10 he said from the things that call to iman and the causes of iman is a da'wah ila Allah wa ila deenihi wa tawasi bil haq wa tawasi bil sabr wa da'wah ila asl deen wa da'wah ila iltizam shira'ihi bil amr bil ma'ruf wa nahi an al munkar and from the things that, that strengthen iman is da'wah calling to Allah and calling to the deen of Allah and enjoining upon one another the truth and enjoining upon one another patience and he calling people to the foundation of the deen and calling people to adherence to the laws of Islam by enjoining the good and forbidding the wrong the 11th thing that he said concerning the uh, now from the things that strengthen and increase iman he said from amongst the most important things that are the sources of iman and the things that strengthen iman is tawteen and nafs ala muqawamat ma yunafi al-iman min shu'ab al-kufr wal-nifaq wal-fusuq wal-isyan yani that a person prepare their nafs that they make preparation that they train their nafs to resist everything that negates iman yani to protect the iman from that which harms it destroys it or negates it opposes it whether it is yani from the aspects of disbelief or hypocrisy or major or minor sins all of those things yani negate iman oppose iman destroy iman and harm iman so a person has to prepare themselves to train their nafs to resist to fight against to struggle against everything that nullifies iman that's what he mentioned concerning those yani the things which strengthen iman the causes of iman uh, and then the next chapter al fasl al thalith fi fawa'id al iman wa thamarati and this is the chapter that we just finished um, so it's fresh in our minds. Um, he said, how many, so many uh, are the benefits and the fruits now and later to the heart and to the body physically and yani, uh, the comfort of a human being, the hayat al tayyibah the good life in the dunya and in the akhirah, the benefits and fruits of iman. So many are the benefits and fruits of iman. In fact, he said, in general, we can say that خيرات الدنيا والآخرة ودفع الشرور كلها يعني everything that's good in this world and the next life and the يعني repulsing of everything that is evil is from the fruits of Iman then he mentions the first of them and this he says is the greatest of them ومن أعظم ثمارها from the greatest of them is that a person enjoys 
the special guardianship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives to those who strive and to achieve his pleasure. The second of them, he said, is that complete and perfect iman prohibits a person from entering the hellfire at all. And even a little iman prohibits, protects, prevents a person from al-khulud, from remaining in the hellfire eternally. Any yani iman prevents a person if they entered the fire from remaining in it. And perfect and complete iman pre- prevents a person from entering the hellfire at all. That was number three. I read it secondly. I skipped number two. Um, from the fruits of Iman, the second one he said, al fawz bi ridha Allah wa dar karamatihi. Yani that a person will achieve the success of earning the pleasure of Allah and the home of honor that he has prepared for those who believe and do good deeds, that is al-Jannah. Yani the second of them, he said, is being successful in achieving the pleasure of Allah and the reward that he has, the place of honor that he has for those who believe and do good deeds. The third of them is that Iman, Yani, complete and perfect iman prevents a person from entering the fire at all, at dukhul. And even a little iman prevents a person from remaining in the fire, al khulud. Number four, he said, is that, and Allah yudafi an al mu'minina jamil makari wa yunajjihim min al shadaid. That from the benefits and fruits of iman is that Allah would defend those who believe from everything that they dislike, and He will save them from hardships and difficulties. And Allah will protect the person from that which they dislike, from the things that they hate, from the things that they fear. And He will also save a person who has fallen into some difficulty or hardship. Allah will rescue them from it. And here He mentioned the dua of Yunus, السلام, um, that He said when He was in the belly of the whale, لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين. And this is of the great, tremendous supplications that the Prophet وسلم, has given to us, a treasure. Yani if a person really believes, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that there is no person who is in hardship or difficulty and supplicate with these words of Yunus ﷺ, except that Allah will rescue them. So if we are in trouble, then we need to be reciting this all the time, but with consciousness, yani with reflection on what we are saying and the meaning of it, yani the magnitude of these words, and believing that Allah responds to this. If a person is in difficulty, they should find comfort in these words. Now, uh, and I believe that if a person supplica- supplicates to Allah with any supplication, there will be no harm in adding these words to it. Any the acknowledgement of La ilaha illa anta, subhanaka inni kuntu min al And what this actually means, yani, is. The meaning of it is tremendous, but I mean, the most important of it, I guess, is the acknowledgement of Tawheed and the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our own shortcoming. That indeed we have fallen short. Number five, he says, Iman al amal al sali al huwa faru'uhu yuthmir al hayat al tayyibah fi hadhi al dar wa fi dar al karar. Yani that Iman and righteous deeds, which are a branch of Iman, together, the fruit that they bring forth is the good life in this world and in the permanent life of the next world. Then he says, number six, it's numbered here in this book, number six, uh, that all actions and all speech, إِنَّمَا تَصِحُوا وَتَقْمُلُوا بِحَسَبِ مَا يَقُومُ بِقَلْبِ صَاحِبِهِ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ وَالْإِخْلَاصِ That every deed and every action of, a human, of the believer, it becomes valid. And it becomes, it is completed and perfected in accordance with yani, the level of iman and ikhlas that's in the heart of the person speaking or in the heart of the person acting, doing that action. Yani, it is dependent, yani, its validity and its completion and perfection is depending upon the iman, dependent upon the iman that's in one's heart, dependent upon the ikhlas of the person who is speaking or act, acting. And he doesn't number here this one, but and he, we numbered it. Uh, I think in another edition that I have, it was like se- mentioned as a separate fruit. Um, he said that if there was nothing from the fruits of a man more than that, it is a source of consolation and comfort for the one, for the believer at the time of calamities and afflictions that every human being is subject to. If there was no more than that as a fruit of a man, that would be sufficient. That a man is your consolation at time of affliction and difficulty. And hardships. Then he mentioned number eight from the fruits of Iman. 
and from the fruits of yani, things that are necessitated by iman, uh, like righteous actions. He said, is that which is mentioned in the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Maryam, 1996, Inna amanu wa amalu That those who believe and do good deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make, yani ar-Rahman will make for them, yani he will place love. And Allah will love them, he will place love in the hearts of the believers for them. And under this fruit, the, the, the Shaykh Imam uh, Asadi rahimahullah, also mentioned, Yani the achievement of al Imam of deen being an Imam in the Deen, and the praise, yani on the tongues of the people, uh, and now and the praise on the tongues of the people now, and then he mentions number nine, يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم that Allah will raise up those from amongst you who believe, والذين أوتوا العلم and those who have been given knowledge, درجات. Yani that Allah will raise the people's station in this world and in the next life based upon the fact that they have Iman. And additionally, yani He will raise them based upon the fact that in addition to Iman, they are, the people, they are from the people of knowledge, due to their knowledge. Number 10, he says, from the fruits of Iman is husul al-bishara bi karamatillah wal amnu al-tam min jami' al Yani that a person would achieve the good tidings, the glad tidings of honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and complete and perfect any safety and security. And under this particular fruit, and he didn't number, but he mentions that a person will receive, yani, yu'atikum kiflaini min rahmatihi. There will come two portions of the rahmah of Allah, yani a double reward. And he also mentioned um, the light, that they will have a light, a light that will guide them in this world and in the next life. And then he said, وَكَذَلِكَ رَتَّبَ الْمَغْفِرَ عَلَى الْإِيمَانِ Yani the forgiveness of a person's sins is based upon, dependent upon, Iman. Number 11, he mentioned, Husul al-Falah and al-Huda. Yani al-Falah, which is the achievement of everything that a person desires, and being safe, and being saved from everything that a person fears. And the guidance, which is the most honorable and noble of means to achieve that Falah, that success. Yani from the fruits of Iman, is that a person which, which would achieve success, Yani that they will be saved from what they feared, yani from the hellfire. And they will achieve yani what everyone, yani every believer desires, that is al-Jannah. Number 12 from the fruits of Iman is intifab al-mawa'idh wa tathkir wal-ayat, that the believers, because of their Iman, they benefit from admonitions and exhortations and reminders and the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number 13, he says, al-Iman yahmil sahibahu ala shukr fi halat al-sarra وَالصَّبْرِ فِي حَالَةِ الدَّرَّةِ وَكَسْبِ الْخَيْرِ فِي كُلِّ أَوْقَاتِهِ Yani that iman is what encourages, what carries, what prompts the one who has iman to be thankful at the time when good comes to them and to be patient at the time when harm comes to them and also to earn khair, yani to earn good at all times. And yani because in every situation, whether good comes to them or harm comes to them, they're acting in the right way. Therefore, they get good all the time. Number 14 from the fruits of Iman is that Iman cuts off a shukuk. Yaqta'u a shukuk alati ta'aridu li kathir min al-nas fatadurru bidinihim. Yani that Iman eliminates, destroys, removes the doubts which most of the people are subject to and which causes harm in their deen. Number 15, he said, Iman is the malja al-mu'mineen. Yani that Iman is the, yani the sanctuary, the place that the Iman, that the believer goes back to for guidance in every situation or circumstance, whether it is happiness or sadness, fear or safety, obedience or disobedience, or any other situation or circumstance that the believer finds himself in. Yani their recourse is to Iman. Yani they go back to the Iman to be directed and to be guided and to be strengthened Yani, and to be consoled. Number 16, he said, Al-Iman al-Sahih yamna al-abd min al-wukuf al-mubiqat al-muhalika. Yani, that the correct Iman, authentic Iman, the proper Iman, prohibits, prevents the person from falling into those major destructive sins. Number 17, he said, and this is the last number that he mentions here, and also from Iman, 
uh, is that which is confirmed in the Sahihain, in the two books of Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Abu Musa al-Ashari, and the hadith of the example of the believer uh, who recites the Qur'an uh, being like the citron. That is, its taste is fine, and it has a good taste, and it has a good scent. And the likeness of the believer who doesn't recite the Qur'an is like the date. Yani, it has a good taste, but it doesn't have any scent. And then he mentioned the people divided into yani, four groups of people. The first two are the believers, the one who recites the Qur'an and learns the knowledge of the deen. And the other one, yani, who also has good, but doesn't have, yani, doesn't recite the Qur'an, doesn't have knowledge of the deen, so their benefit is limited to itself and they don't benefit others. And that's what we covered yani, in nine months. The closing comments of the author are relatively brief, but some tremendous points. I numbered them as six, and they are not numbered here, but anyway, I'm going to number them as six just from the way uh, the book is written, yani the way it's printed. I'm going to number it like six, uh, and it seems as though the author, the author intended it like that, because each one of these six points uh, begin with the particle N. فَتَبَيَّنَا مِنْ مَا تَقَدَّمَ Let me look at this time. Time is up. Just about. فَتَبَيَّنَا مِنْ مَا تَقَدَّمَ It became clear from what has preceded. Yani from what we mentioned of the definitions of Iman and the things from which Iman is derived and the fruits and benefits of Iman, it becomes clear from this lengthy discussion أَنَّ هَذِهِ الشَّجْرَةِ الْمُبَارَكَةِ شَجْرَةَ الْإِيمَانِ أَبْرَكُوا الْأَشْجَارِ وَأَنْفَعُهَا وَأَدْوَامُهَا وَأَدْوَامُهَا يعني It became clear from what preceded that this blessed tree, the tree of faith, is the most blessed of trees. It has the most khair. And it is the most beneficial of trees. And it is the most consistent or permanent or perpetual of all trees. That's the first point. The second point, probably it could be second and third point, but they came together in one paragraph. So, and only one particle, anna, so I'm going to put them together like that, as though the author intended that. Wa anna, it also became clear from what preceded, anna uruqaha wa usulaha wa qawaidaha, that the roots of this tree of faith, the foundations, the base and fundamentals of this tree of faith, Yani are al iman wa ulumuhu wa ma'arifuhu. Yani the roots, the foundations, the base of this tree is iman and the knowledge base of iman. Yani the sciences of iman. Iman and the knowledge. Yani the knowledge of what? First and foremost, primarily, yani the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the asma Allah al husna wa sifatihi wa al Yani this is the Ulum of Iman, knowing Allah, knowing His names and His characteristics and His qualities and His actions, and also knowledge of the fundamentals of Iman, the Arkan of Iman. Yani this is the foundation, the fundamental base of the tree of faith. It's Iman itself and the knowledge of Iman, knowledge of Allah and knowledge of the fundamentals of Iman. Wasaquha, He coupled this together without a separate particle, so I'm bringing them together. Wasaquha. وَأَفْنَانُهَا شَرَائِعَ الْإِسْلَامِ وَأَمَالَ الصَّالِحَةِ وَأَخْلَاقَ الْفَاضِلَةِ الْمُؤَيَّدَةِ وَالْمَقْرُونَةِ بِالْإِخْلَاصِ لِلَّهِ وَمُتَابَةِ لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم And the, um, the trunk, the trunk, the trunk of this tree and the branches of this tree, he said, are what? The legislations of Islam, what Allah has legislated. And the righteous actions of Iman are also what? From the trunk of the tree and the branches of the tree are things that Allah has legislated. And the righteous actions and the yani, noble character, morals and manners. Notice that he mentions here yani, actions, deeds, worship and manners and morals along with yani, what Allah has legislated as being part of the trunk of the tree. And it is part of the main part of the tree the trunk of the tree and the branches of the tree. This, these things, the legislation of Islam and the righteous actions and the noble character and morals and manners, al-mu'ayyada, 
والمكرونة بالإخلاص لله يعني being supported and being accompanied by sincerity for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strict adherence to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the trunk and the يعني, branches of the tree. وَأَنَّ ثِمَارَهَا Here he used the particle again, so we make that. The next point. وَأَنَّ ثِمَارَهَا وَجَنَاهَا الدَّائِمَ الْمُسْتَمِرُ يعني, And that the fruits of this tree of Iman. Uh, يعني, perhaps the meaning here also might be, يعني, if we want to distinguish these two words, ثِمَارُ وَجَنَاهَا يعني, The fruits that are, that, يعني, are in the tree, as opposed to the fruits that are part of the tree, but yani, they are easily accessible, accessible, hanging from the tree. Yani, so the fruits of this tree that are unceasing, that are continuously being produced for the believer is as-samtu al-hasan. And as here, I think the meaning of it is yani, having a good manner, yani, the, way of, the demeanor of a person, the way they act. Okay? In the translation, they translate it as a sumptu al hasan, yani sod, silent, good silence, sumpt. But actually, the word that came here is sumpt with seen. Allahu alam, it appears as though, yani the meaning is that from the fruits of Iman is that a person has a good demeanor, the way they carry themselves, yani their way of doing things, their manner of dealing with things. This is from the fruits of Iman. Yani some people, the way they deal with things and the way they deal with others is just ugly. But from the fruits of Iman is that a person has a good demeanor. They carry themselves in a nice way, in a pleasant way. Yani they're respectful and kind and cordial with others. And the way they do things is good because of their Iman. Wal hadyu as sali, righteous guidance. Wal khuluq al hasan, and good character and manners and morals. Wal la hadyu bi dhikrillahi wa shukri wa thana alayhi. And here, yani he said from the fruits of Iman is look at this person, the, the believer. Look at yani, what they're engaged in, constantly engaged in, yani, devoted, fervently engaged in the remembrance of Allah and gratitude to Allah and praise of Allah. And these are fundamentals of the character of the believer. Dhikrillah wa shukri wa thana That a Muslim is always engaged in praising Allah and thanking Allah and expressing gratitude to Allah and engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he goes to the other side. Wa naf'u li ibadillahi. Bihasab al Qudra. And in addition to remembering Allah and praising Allah and being thankful to Allah, they also, and from the fruits of Iman, is that the believer benefits the worshippers of Allah according to their ability. Hasab al Qudra. According to their ability. Everybody according to their ability. Well, whatever they have the ability to do. The believer from the fruits of Iman is that the believer helps the people to the best of their ability. Nafu al ilm wa nus. Yani benefiting them by knowledge or by good advice. Wa nafu al jah. Well, badan and and benefiting the people by one's position. One's yeah, any person has influence in the society. They have a position in the society. Maybe they don't have any money. Maybe they don't, they're not physically strong, but they have a, a a position in the society, influence, a station in the society. They're able to help people through that. <coughs> if not that, maybe one is young and strong and can help people physically. Wa al mal. If not that, then helping people with their wealth. Wa jamia turuk and nafa and utilizing all of the Various ways of benefiting the people. And the reality of all of this, he said, is summarized in two matters. Al-Qiyam bi wa khalqihi. Yani fulfilling the right, the reality of this whole affair is summarized in what? Fulfilling the rights of Allah and fulfilling the rights of the people. Allah's creatures. Then he says, Wa anna hadhi shajra. The next point, the fourth point, وَأَنَّ هَذِهِ الشَّجْرَةِ فِي كُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ مُتَفَاوِتَةٌ تَفَاوِتًا عَظِيمًا بِحَسَبِ مَا قَامَ بِهِمْ وَاتَّصَفُوا بِهِ مِنْ هَذِهِ الصِّفَاتِ Yani that this tree, also from what has preceded, it becomes clear to us. It is crystal clear that this tree, in the hearts of the believers, differs, varies, there is a tremendous disparity between this tree in the heart of one person and another, and in the hearts of the believers. And it differs greatly. Based on what? Based on 
the extent to which these characteristics of the tree of Iman are found in that person. To whatever extent that person yani, has these characteristics, is described with these characteristics, is acting upon these characteristics, to that extent, yani, will, yani, one person will excel over another in terms of yani, the magnitude and the greatness of the tree of Iman in that person's heart. Number five, وَأَنَّ مَنَازِلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ تَابِعَةٌ لِهَذَا كُلِّهِ And the fifth point yani, that becomes clear from what has preceded is that their stations, the stations of the believers in the next life is dependent upon this, totally. Dependent upon what? Yani, the extent to which a person is characterized with these characteristics of Iman, with the actions of Iman with the character and manners of Iman. To whatever extent a person is characterized with this, this will be the determining factor that will determine a person's station in the next life. Then he said, Yani 6, I think this is the last point, وَأَنَّ الْفَضْلَ فِي ذَلِكَ كُلِّهِ لِلَّهِ وَحْدَهُ وَالْمِنَّةَ كُلَّهَا يعني لِلَّهِ وَحْدَهُ يعني That this, the favor and the blessing and the credit for all of this, yani, it, it belongs to Allah. Yani, it is a bounty, a blessing, a favor, a gift from Allah alone. Yani, all of this that the believer has achieved in this world as well as in the next life, it all goes back to the fadl of Allah. The minna of Allah. Allah's favor, His bounty, His blessing, a gift that He gives to whomever He wills. And He mentioned concerning this, the, the ayat of the Qur'an in Surah Al-Hujurat, 49th Surah, 17th, ayat, بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ هَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِيمَانِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Rather, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has favored you by guiding you to Iman, if indeed you are truthful. It is Allah who has favored you. Yani whatever came to you of good, yani it is the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know that we're over time now. So we'll just close, Yani, with the words that the Shaykh <laughs> mentions at the end here. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I know what it is. Okay, Tayyip. Uh, he, he closes by saying, and he said, Yani, the people of Jannah, they will say, after they have entered the paradise and they have taken their places in paradise, they will say, acknowledging, confessing, admitting, to the favor of their Rabb, the great favor of their Rabb upon them, they will say, وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَ لِهَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَحْتَدِيَ لَوْ لَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ Yani, they will say, the praise belongs to Allah. He is the one who has guided us to this. Yani, to our entry into paradise. To these high lofty stations in paradise, the hamd, the praise belongs to Allah. Who has guided us to this? It's His guidance. And, if it were not for the guidance of Allah, we would not have been guided. It's purely the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives whoever he wills. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُولُ رَبِّنَا بِالْحَقِّ And they will acknowledge that the messengers of our Rabb came with the truth. Yani through which we were guided. That enabled us to do the deeds that we did. That was the cause of earning the rahmah of Allah and the fadl of Allah and entry into paradise. And the ayat, and he closes by saying, وَنُودُوا أَن تِلْكُمُ الْجَنَّةُ أُرِثْتُمُوهَا بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Yani it will be called out to them, it will be announced to them that the, this is the garden, this is your garden, which you have inherited بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Yani due to what you have done. This ayah requires some explanation, but anyway perhaps we'll come back to it. In brief we can say that the Prophet ﷺ made us to know that the people of the hellfire will be shown their place in the hellfire and this will be cause of grief for them. I mean, they will be shown their place in, that would have been their place in paradise and this will be cause of grief, a grief, grief for them and the people of the paradise will be shown their place in the hellfire and this will be a cause of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they see that they have, by the mercy of Allah and His favor, they have escaped from it. So the believers, they have inherited those places in Jannah that were assigned for the people who didn't do what they should have done and they lost it. This is one of the meanings of Urithtumuha bima kuntum ta'amalun that you have inherited these places from the people who didn't get them due to what you have done 
and the scholars, yani Ibn Kathir rahimahullah says, bima kuntum ta'amalun, yani it doesn't mean be here, it doesn't mean be a thamaniya, but rather it means be a sababiya. Yani that be ma kuntum ta'amalun doesn't mean that you paid for, yani by your deeds you paid for this place in paradise, rather it means that you're doing those good deeds was a cause of you receiving the rahmah of Allah and the fadl of Allah yani, through which you entered the paradise. The shaykh, he says here, and we close with this, فَجَمَعَ فِي هَذِهِ الْآيَاتِ بَيْنَ الْإِخْبَارِ بِإِعْتِرَافِهِمْ وَثَنَائِهِمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ بِنِعْمِهِ وَفَضْلِهِ حَيْثُ وَصَلُوا إِلَى هَذِهِ الْمَنَازِلَ الْعَالِيَةِ وَبَيْنَ ذِكْرِ السَّبَبَ الَّذِي أَوْصَلَهُمْ إِلَى ذَلِكَ بِمِنَّةِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ بِهِ وَهُوَ الْعَامَلْ الصَّالِي الَّذِي هُوَ الْإِمَانُ وَعَمَالِهِ He said, so in this ayat, there is gathered together two matters. Yani, we are informed of one, their acknowledgement and their praise of Allah for His favor and His mercy upon them. Yani, they acknowledge that yani, it was the ni'mah of Allah and the fadl of Allah that they entered paradise. Yani, it was through that that they reached these high stations in paradise. And also here is the mention of the sabab, yani, the cause or the means due to which they reach these high stations in Jannah. And this is also the cause, yani, is also from the favor of Allah yani, and the, a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the righteous deeds which they did, which is iman and its actions. Yani in this ayat, there is the mention that they entered paradise by the favor of Allah. And they also mention the sabab. Yani that is also from Allah. Yani that Allah guided one to it, enabled one to do it, and then accepted it from them. All of that is the favor of Allah. And it was those deeds that Allah guided to and that Allah accepted. Yani from that person, uh, that it was due to those deeds that a person earned the mercy of Allah through which they entered the paradise. Then the shaykh closes by saying, نَسَأَلُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَيَمُنَّا عَلَيْنَا بِالْإِيمَانِ الصَّادِقِ And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the favor of truthful iman. وَأَلَّا يَكِلَنَا إِلَىٰ أَنفُسِنَا تَرَفَةَ عَيْنَ And that he doesn't leave us dependent on ourselves even for the blinking of an eye. وَأَلَّا يَزِيغُ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَانَا And that he does not cause our hearts to deviate after he has guided us. وَيَهَبَ لَنَا مِن لَدُونْهُ رَحْمَةً إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْوَهَاب And that he grant us يعني, a free gift يعني, that Allah gives free to him, whoever he wills from himself. That is the rahmah. Indeed, he is the one who gives gifts freely. وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمَ تَسْلِيمًا And may the salat and salam be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his family and his companions. And this, the author says, it was written by Al-Abd Al-Faqir Allah. Yani it was written by the one who is in need of, of Allah. That is Abdurrahman ibn Nasir. Ibn Abdullah ibn Nasir. Al-Sa'adi. Yani Abdurrahman ibn Nasir. Ibn Abd, Abd, Abdullah ibn Nasir. Al-Sa'adi. Ghafrullah lahu wa li walidahi wa li jimi al-mu'mineena. And this uh, book was, was completed on the 8th of Dhul Hijjah in the year of 1374. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Yani two years before the death of the author. Yani from the last of what he wrote uh, and from the best of what we have found. May Allah yani accept uh, from him and may Allah yani give us success in trying to act upon yani what we have been given here. Please go back to the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. And read an explanation of this ayat uh, from Surah Al-A'raf 743, how he has explained this. And also, Alam al-Sunnah al-Manshura, uh, questions number 137 and 136 and 137, also gives a beautiful explanation of this particular point that we close with. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, shadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيراً